This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vintage style logo design using Inkscape. In order to follow along with this tutorial, though, you will need to download and install the font that I used for the word design here. It's called Festival Bedaya. I'll have a link in the description of the video. So go ahead and download and install that font before launching Inkscape, and then we'll be good to go. Before we get started, though, if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go through every single tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is, and I demonstrate how it works. I'll have some information about that in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. The first thing I want to do is just set up the document. I want to come up here to where it says View. Make sure you have Custom selected. Let's go to Zoom. Let's zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then I'm going to turn off Snapping up here in the top left corner. And then I'm going to open up the... Um, the document properties menu to get rid of this page border and change the unit of measurement here. So I'll go to file, document properties, and it should open up over here on the side. Display units, I'm going to change that to pixels. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of the page border, which is over here. So now we can close out of document properties. Let's open up the fill and stroke menu, which is over here. The edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. If you click on that, or a keyboard shortcut, you can just press control, shift, and F, and that'll open it as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the text. So let's grab the text tool, which is, if I could find it, it should be over here. I'm used to using these keyboard shortcuts, so I sometimes get lost over here in the sidebar. So let me just type in design, as I did for the thumbnail here. If you notice, I have the word design as the uh, primary text. And I'm going to change the font of that. I'm going to go to text, text and font. And I'm going to look for the font that I installed called Festival Badaya click apply. And there you go. There you have the text. Now we can close out of the text menu. I'm going to grab the select tool and I'm going to scale this up. And I'm just going to hold control while I do that to make sure it locks the proportions like that. And now what I want to do is convert this to a path and ungroup it. So we'll go to path, object to path, and then go to object. And we're looking for ungroup. And I'm going to bring down the opacity of this roughly in half. Now you have to have the fill and stroke menu open in order to do this. So make sure you have that opened. I'm going to bring down the, the opacity roughly in half. And now I want to move these letters a little closer together. So I'm going to hold control. I'm going to zoom in by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And I'm going to take this letter D and I'm just going to move this closer. But I'm going to hold control while I do that to lock it onto the horizontal axis like that. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on the letter E so I have both of these letters selected. Hold control, move this closer. Now I understand that the letter S here is overlapping with the letters, but that's okay. In fact, that's kind of the point of the design. I'm going to be incorporating that into the design here, as you can see. So I'm going to hold shift, click on the letter S. So we have all three of these letters selected. And to move your view around like this, to move the page, you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. Let me move these over while holding control to lock the proportions. And then just do the same thing for the rest of the word. Just go ahead and bring these letters in like that. And now I will press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this shape in the background here, this emblem. So let me go back into Inkscape. And I'm going to grab the squares and rectangles tool, which is over here. And I'm going to click and drag like this to create a nice vertical rectangle going through the word like that. You want to make sure you have sharp corners up here. If, you're, if your corners are rounded, just go ahead and click this corner button up here to make the corners sharp. And now I will grab the circles and ellipses tool. And I will click and drag to create an ellipse going through that rectangle, kind of like that. Now, if you notice what I'm doing here, I'm going to take the intersecting area between those two shapes in order to create this shape right here. So to do that, first, let me make sure I have them aligned. I'm going to grab the Select tool. I'm going to hold Shift and click on the rectangle so I have them both selected. And then I'll open up the Align and Distribute menu, which is over here. Or you could press Control, Shift, and A. And I want to have the relative set to... Uh, last selected, and I'm going to center it up on the vertical axis, and then I'll go to Path, Intersection, and there we go. Now we have that shape. Now don't worry about this shape being too big or too small. We're going to change that later on. So I'm going to place this right about here. In fact, what I want to do is I want to click and drag over the text right here to select the text items. Click and drag over just the text, not the whole shape, just the text itself, and go to Object, Group, and then I want to click and drag over everything just to make sure I have this aligned vertically. I'm going to click on uh, center on vertical axis right there and then click off it to deselect everything. Now what I could do is I could take this. I'm going to hold control and shift and either scale it up or scale it down, whatever you want to do, whatever, whatever you need to do to make it fit the design better. I like how this looks right about here. 
I'm going to grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. I'm going to click and drag over these top nodes right here and then just bring them down by holding Control and just click and dragging them down like that. There we go. Now let's go back to the Select tool. Let's make this thing into an outline rather than a solid fill. So let's remove the fill color by clicking on this little red X down here in the bottom left corner and then give this a black stroke by holding Shift and clicking on the color black over there. Now the thickness of this will vary. Uh, you can change that by coming over here to the Fill and Stroke menu. I'm going to I'm going to click on uh, Stroke Style, and I want this to be about 15. Looks pretty good. Now, whatever it is that you make the thickness of your stroke be, make sure you make a mental note of what that is because we're going to we're going to need that number in just a minute. So, 15 is for this first one right here. Now we'll go to Path, Stroke to Path, Path, uh, Break Apart, and then go to Path Difference. Whoops, that was a mistake. Let me undo that. Edit Undo Difference. And then click off of it to deselect everything. And then take this larger shape right here, send that to the back by pressing this button over here that says Lower Selection to the bottom. And then hold Shift and click on the smaller shape right there and go to Path Difference so that you end up with this shape right here that is a path and not a stroke. Now let's duplicate this. Let's press Control D on the keyboard to make a duplicate copy of this. Go to Path, uh, Break Apart, and then we'll go to Path, Union. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this red, and I'm going to give this a red outline by holding Shift and clicking on the color red like that. And I'm going to make this outline a little bigger. I'm going to make this maybe 10. This is going to represent the space between the two borders here. If you notice, we made this first border already. Now we're going to make this second border. This red object is going to represent the space between those two borders. So let me go back in there and, and finish this up. Uh, let me change this, make this a little bigger. You hold the plus icon to make that bigger like that. That's looking pretty good. Now when you're doing this, I probably should have noted over here where it says join, make sure you have a square join. You don't want a rounded join like that. You want it to be nice and square so you get those square corners. Uh, maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. And I'll do this again. I'll go to Path, Stroke to Path, Path, Break Apart. If I can find it, there it is. Go to Object, Ungroup, and then go to Path, Union. Now we're going to do this one more time. I'm going to add a smaller stroke over here. Now this stroke right here was 15 pixels. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. So I'm going to hold Shift and click on the color black to give that an outline. Let's click the red X to get rid of the red fill. And I'm going to make this something smaller than 15, maybe something like 10. That right there looks pretty good. Now, again, we want to make sure we have squared, a squared join, a squared cap like that. And I'd say that's looking pretty good right here. Now, again, you want to make a mental note of this. So for this one, I used 15. For this one, I used 10. Let's go to Path, Stroke to Path, and there we go. Now we can click off of that to deselect everything. So let's start working on these little um, horizontal bars going across the design right here. We'll do that next. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Squares and Rectangles tool. I'm going to click and drag to create a, a rectangle going through the design right here. And I want to get rid of that outline. I'm going to hold Shift and click on the red X, and I'm just going to give that a black fill by clicking on black right there. And this is where we're going to have to remember this number that we use. We want to make the height of this the same thickness of this border right here so that it's consistent all the way through the design. So let me grab the Select tool. Let me change the height of this. Well, first, let me change the pixels. Let me change this to pixels. Change the height of this to 15. There we go. Move this over here, a little closer to the word. Maybe make this a little wider. You can go ahead and adjust the size of this as needed. And then I just want to make sure that this is aligned on the uh, vertical axis here. So I'm going to hold Shift, click on the emblem behind it, come back up here to the Align and Distribute menu, and make sure you have it centered on the vertical axis like that. And now click off of the Deselect Everything. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this shape right here and duplicate that by pressing Control D, hold Control, move this up like this. And again, we're holding Control when clicking and dragging to lock it onto the axis like that so it doesn't go off of, off center. And I want to make the height of this the same as the thickness of this border. So I used 10 pixels for that one. So I'll make this one 10 pixels high. And there you go. Now I'm just going to zoom in. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Oops. And I just want to make sure that the spacing between these two lines is about equal to the spacing between those two lines. If you want, you can be meticulous with this and measure it, measure it if you want. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna leave it right about there. I think that looks close enough. And then I want to take this and just move this in a little bit. Take this arrow, move that in. Take that arrow, move that in like that. 
and then hold shift, click on the original design behind it, and then just make sure you have that centered like that. Now we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And now I'm gonna click and drag over just those two rectangles right there that we just created, and I wanna duplicate them. I'll press Control D, hold Control, move these ones down here. And I just wanna flip them vertically. I could, You can click on this button up here that says Flip Selected Objects Vertically. What I like to do is just press the letter V on the keyboard, much easier. And once you've done that, you can click off of that. Okay, so if you notice what we have here, we have the structure of the design in place. Now we just have to go through and uh, fix some of the spacing issues or uh, finish up what we were doing here as far as the spacing goes. Let me click on the word right here and then ungroup those letters. I'll go to Object, Ungroup, because we previously had those letters grouped together. Let me click off of that to deselect everything. And now I want to delete out the area of the uh, emblem in the background where these words are. So let me zoom in a little bit. Let me grab the squares and rectangles tool. I'm gonna to create a rectangle going over the word like that. I'm gonna make this red so I can see it against everything else. And if you notice over here, I have the rectangle. Let me grab the select tool. I have the rectangle going through this bar right here at the, at the top and I have it going through this bar. Oops. I have it going through this bar down here at the bottom. And now what I wanna do is duplicate that by pressing Control D. Hold Shift, click on this shape. Go to Path, Difference. Then take this red shape, hold shift, click on this object out here, and go to path, difference. Let me try that again, path, difference, there we go. And now I just wanna delete out the areas of this bar up here. So let me grab the rectangles and squares tool again, create a rectangle going through here like this. Grab this select tool, hold shift, click on that object, go to path, difference. We'll do that one more time. Come down here to this one so that it looks the same on the bottom as it does on the top. Hold shift, click on that, go to path. I don't know why that's not working half the time, but there we go, now it's working. Okay, so, um, oh, you know what? I made a mistake here. Let me just edit that. I should have moved that in a little more. There we go. Okay, now to do that, if you need to do what I just did there, you just grab the nodes tool, click and drag over those two nodes. You can just move them in and out like that. You can hold control to lock it onto the horizontal axis. There we go. All right, so now let's take care of the lettering in here. If you notice, I have the letter S overlapping everything in its way. Let's go ahead and create that right now. So let me grab the letter S right here. Let me create a duplicate of that by pressing Control D. And I'm going to make this green. And I'm going to give this a green stroke. So I'm going to hold Shift and press on green again. And I'm going to come over here to the Fill and Stroke menu, Stroke Style. And I'm just going to increase the size of this until it's as big as I need it to be. Okay, so I want this to be big enough that it's going through, that it's covering the tip of the letter E here, like that. But at the same time, I don't want it clipping off the top of the E right here, but that's okay, I'll fix that in just a minute. Okay, so that right there is a pretty good size. I'm gonna go to Path, Stroke to Path, Object, Ungroup, and then Path, Union. And now what I will do is I will, I'm gonna cut out this little area right here that I don't want. Let me grab the pen tool, which is um, over here, the Bezier pen, you just press B on the keyboard. And I wanna make sure I have the proper mode selected, which is create regular Bezier path. And I'm just gonna draw a shape going through this intersecting area right here. Go back to the select tool, hold shift, click on that green letter and go to path difference. And there we go. Now what I will do is I will take this green letter Press Control D to duplicate it. Hold Shift, click on the letter E right here and go to Path, whoops, Path, Difference. Do the same thing over here. Duplicate it again, Control D. Hold Shift, click on the letter I, Path, Difference. And then one more time, take this letter S, hold Shift, click on this bar right here, go to Path, Difference. Okay, so now let's clean up this, these little extra objects in here that we don't want. With this object right here selected, go to Path, Break Apart, and then we'll have everything broken up into individual pieces. I'm going to hold Shift and click on this piece to deselect it, then hold Shift and click on this piece to deselect it, and then the only thing left selected will be the objects we don't want, and then you can just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And for this letter E right here, I want to get rid of this area. I'm just going to, for this, I'm just going to grab the Nodes tool. I'm going to go in there and select those nodes and then press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Same thing over here. I want to get rid of this little letter 
the tip of this little letter I. Press delete, there we go. We grab the select tool, let me press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. Now I can click and drag over everything, come over here to the fill and stroke tab, the fill menu, and bring the opacity all the way up to 100%. And as you can see, the logo is starting to come together. It's looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some text in here. I'm gonna add some more text. Let me grab the text tool. Let me click right there and I'm just gonna write all caps, vintage logo. So it's vintage logo design. Let me change the text of that. We'll go to text, text and font. And for this, I'm going to use Montserrat, like a bolder, a bolder, heavier weight font. You can use whatever font you'd like for this. Any kind of sans font should work. It doesn't have to be Montserrat. Close out of that. There we go, and move this back in a little bit. Let me grab the select tool. I'm just gonna put this over here towards the center. Maybe I'll scale this down. Oops, maybe I'll scale this down a little bit. Maybe I'll put some spacing between those letters. Let me go back to the text tool. Click on the text, and let me just change the spacing to like maybe 10, see how that looks. That's too much. Maybe seven. Okay, good enough. Now we'll grab the select tool. Hold shift, click on the logo there, and just center it up on the vertical axis like that. And for this for this part, you could put whatever you want up here. Uh, for this thumbnail design, I put the Inkscape logo up here just to show you that this was an Inkscape tutorial. But I'm just gonna, for this, for this demonstration, I'll just put some stars in here. So let me grab the stars and polygons tool. From the settings up here, you wanna make sure you have star selected instead of polygon. Five corners, spoke ratio of 0.375 and then zeros for both rounded and randomized. Now you can just go ahead and create a star like that. Hold control and bring your cursor up, straight up like that to create a star like that. Now let me get rid of the, the green stroke around there by holding shift and clicking on the red X. Let me make this black, grab the select tool, hold control and shift and scale that down like that. And put that right about there. And then I wanna make a duplicate of that. I'm gonna press control D then hold control and move this over here like that. Maybe I'll make this one a little smaller. Bring that down a little bit. Control D, make a duplicate of that. Hold control, move that over like that. And then select all three of those stars and to make sure that they're spaced apart evenly, come over here to the li line of distribute menu and we're looking for a distribute right here. And then over here where it says make horizontal gaps between objects equal, click on that. And now you can just group that all together by going to object group. And then you could press, you could hold shift on the keyboard and click on the object right there and just make sure you have that centered up like that. Now I'm just gonna go in here and adjust the spacing a little bit so it looks a little more consistent, maybe even make this a little bigger. Press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% and as you can see, we are done. So that is how you can go about creating that vintage style logo design using Inkscape. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and as always, thanks for watching.